I want to, uh, my talk is going to be a pretty much a discussion, very pragmatic. When I started to do harm, uh, bioidentical harm replacement therapy years ago, I realized that it wasn't so easy. And the reason I say that is because a lot of my patients would either have, there were two types of patients. The first patient would either have read Suzanne Summers' book and was really seeking um, a harm replacement therapy, so she sort of got it. But the other patients had no clue. And all they knew that they were having all these symptoms, which I knew that bioidentical HRT would help, but they had no clue of, the, of anything. And the first thing on both of those patients' mind was the risk of breast cancer. That's the first thing they asked. And I, as a physician, in a conventional environment at that time, I had to try to convince these patients, without really any randomized controlled trials of bioidentical HRT, with those are just started, you know, the studies are underway, and how was I going to try to let them know that their risks would be minimal? So we sometimes start, if you really critically look at giving bioidentical HRT replacement therapy, if you really look at it, the synthetic, which was a conventional way of pre prescribing HRT, was done without any randomized controlled trials of estrogen in the first place. So we could tell our patients that. But we really didn't have any similar, anything better to say, look, bioidentical HRT has randomized controlled trials. This is the way to go. So I couldn't tell them that. I didn't know that their liver health, what their liver health was, what the risk of toxin exposure was to their liver that might increase the risk of breast cancer. And liver function tests don't always say it. Liver function tests really assess when there's, the elevated liver function test assess when cell death has occurred. It doesn't tell me the functional capacity. So that was unknown. I had another unknown. I didn't know what their gut health was. So I didn't know if they had beta glucuronidation activity to conjugate their estrogen so they could be excreted safely. I didn't know that. And yet I had to prescribe bioidentical HRT. So I started over the last 10 years and then thousands of women, I really started it at a very critical, critical based way to, to, to try to achieve how I can make my patients safe in using bioidentical HRT. And through the years, I became even more convinced that bioidentical HRT was safer. And I want to explain to you during this discussion how I did that. When um, the first thing, discussion that I usually have with a patient is that, you know, they, we talk about just HRT studies in general. And as I mentioned, that there's really no randomized controlled trials. But I always make them get, I, I, I want to arouse their critical thinking. Even in a patient, patients are savvy. They can do some critical thinking. So the first thing I always tell them is like, there are several articles I draw attention to, and I just I didn't have time on the slide today to add this slide in, but a paper in Sweden, this was done in the 90s, the risk of breast cancer after estrogen and estrogen progesterone therapy. It was done by, uh, in Sweden, uh, Leif, uh, Dr. Leif Berkvist uh, had that. But if you really read that paper critically, they did a prospective study of 23,244 women 35 years of age or above, who had estrogen prescriptions other than non-contraceptive use. And during the follow-up period, they studied them for about 5.7 years, and breast cancer developed in about 253 women. So they go on to talk about how the risk of conjugated estrogens may pre uh, present a slightly increased risk, which we all know, and how the risk of pro estrogen progesterone therapy. But there was a very interesting sentence here I'd like to read to you. That it was, this is published in the New England Journal of Medicine, by the way. We found no, this was in the discussion, we found no association between weaker estrogens, mainly estriols, and the development of breast cancer. And I always tell my patients, this is a very interesting sentence, because nobody picked up on it and decided to start a randomized control trial in the 90s. So that's the first thing I open up this discussion with the patient. So it starts to make them feel a little bit comfortable. I, as, as I present today, I'll go on and discuss about the different types of estrogens. But the second thing is I tell them about their liver health. I said, I have no clue about your liver health. But you know what? I'm going to try to optimize that. And again, that's what this discussion is going to be based on, how I do that. Third thing, I don't know about your gut health. But again, I'm going to try to optimize that so that I can try to opt. Uh, make you safer in doing bioidentical HRT. And the third, fourth thing is, I don't have any clue about inflammation in your body. 
I don't have any conventional standard of care tests that really give me a clue about those, about those four things. So if you'd like to do alternative testing, I can certainly do that. But it's going to add on a cost. And those patients don't want to go, undergo that cost. So the way I came around it was I just assumed they didn't have good liver health, they didn't have good gut health, they had inflammation in their body. And how was it going to address that? And that was through nutraceuticals. I really found that nutraceutical enhancement can really help optimize bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. And this is what the whole uh, I, uh, discussion is about. So every slide that I present today, if it's one thing, is I want you to start thinking about how do I optimize these people? It's added insurance. It's not the bioidentical HRT that I tell them that may cause the breast cancer. But it will be in the patient's mind if they do develop breast cancer that was it bioidentical HRT that really causes? And it's really not. It's all the years of toxin exposure they may have had, all the environmental estrogen exposure that they may have had that could have really done it. But if I optimize their estrogen metabolism and if I enhance their, reduce their risk through reducing inflammation, optimizing gut health, I'm really helping them prevent cancer in any way, shape, or form, harm-related cancers. So the first thing is, is that I always tell them conventional medicine is no longer an optimal model for practicing medicine. And I explain to them what functional medicine is and anti-aging medicine. I think it's very important to start with that discussion. They need to know how you are different. And again, when I tell them about, uh, when they come here and they say, oh, well, Suzanne Summers uses bioidentical HRT, I want to do the same thing, I, I again give them the whole discussion that really it's not just about bioidentical HRT prescribing, it's how I'm going to just optimize your estrogen metabolism at the end of the day. And the first discussion I have them have with them is the different types of estrogens. I think it's very important to talk to, introduce to them the concept of good estrogens versus bad estrogens. That's extremely important. Good estrogens promote lean muscle mass. And again, as a conventional trained MD years ago, I always thought everything went just, it was conjugate estrogens at the end of the day, estradiol. So the goal is to correctly prescribe bioidentical HRT and optimize estrogen metabolism. And I'm going to keep saying that over and over again throughout this throughout the discussion. Again, I explained to them the synthetic versus natural progesterones, that a lot of them think all progesterones are the same. And if we, I show them actually the molecular structure of a synthetic progesterone and natural progesterone molecule, and said this is not the same. When you had insulin, and it was from pigs-derived insulin, there were so many side effects. And now we have human insulin, which is the same bioidentical structure. It confers less side effects and they start to understand the concept of bioidenticals. I don't even let them use the word natural with me. It's not natural harm replacement therapy. It is bioidentical harm replacement therapy. So their foundation is set at that very first visit, what they, their understanding is of bioidentical HRT. Um, we discussed the importance of testosterone replacement therapy. So many women don't understand that testosterone is very important. They just think it adds facial hair and, you know, it's just, it's just not important. And the way I get around that is I, I, the number one biomarker of aging is sarcopenia, loss of muscle mass. Testo women at the past age of 40 are losing 0.6 pounds of muscle mass a year. 